12 Sports. This is the Wendy's Friday Night Blitz. All right, here we go. Week two of the high school football season is in full swing across southern New England. She's Taylor Begley. I'm Maury Hirsch. Gordon Sam Knox joins us shortly. Taylor, what a good night. Again, we avoided the rain. Yeah, another good night for us and for most teams in the area kicking off league play. So good for them. We begin with our highly anticipated game of the week and boy did it live up to that hype. North Kingstown, the place to be tonight. Two of the top teams in D1 going head to head. NK up a score early in driving, but the skippers fumble the snap and Hendrickson right there to make the play, making them pay. Marcus Sukar returns it all the way to the house. That ties things up at seven. Skippers take the lead back here. Eddie Bueller finds Evan Beatty on the short pass right around midfield, and he would take it and run with it. Beatty breaking free, finding his way into the end zone for the score. NK back on top. Ensuing Hawks drive, not for long. Ronjay Francis taking the handoff around midfield. Another explosive play from the Hawks. Hendrickson always coming to play. They take this one 28-21. Capacity crowd at LaSalle for Rams and Catholic Memorial from West Roxbury, Massachusetts. This was the only touchdown score of the night for LaSalle. They were roughed up by a really good Memorial team. 47-7. Hendrickson's going to get their taste of Memorial in a couple weeks. To Central hosting Cranston East at Conley Stadium tonight. The Knights with the ball in the first quarter. Theron Zarwea takes the toss, runs to his left, stops and reverses the other way all the way down the sideline for the score. On the ensuing possession, Daquan Foster finds Naz Millian in the end zone. That ties up the game. The Bolts tried to go for two, but they were stuffed by the Knights defense. Central. Wins big again in this one, 44 to 6. Portsmouth looking to bounce back after a tough week one loss, hosting Westerly. Bulldogs down second half defense, trying to give them some life. The option sniffed out by John Sullivan. And there was no stopping Neil Tulson on the night. The Patriots running back with a couple scores. Here's one of them, 26-10 Portsmouth. To East Greenwich looking for their first win hosting Cumberland in a D2 battle down to the fourth quarter. Avengers get six back. Alexander Diotomasis, the perfect pass to Patrick Kiernan. He slides under the ball for the touchdown. But the Clippers with plenty of answers. Evan Spencer, the great ball to Taye Mirbot. He's taken down inside the five-yard line. Next play, Spencer hands to Andrew Ray for the Cumberland Touchdown there, Cumberland moving to 2-0 with the 35-14 win. Good night for Josh Liam as his guy Liam Cohen is inducted into the UMass Hall of Fame. Classical taking the trip to Middletown, end of the first half. Their QB Tyler Lee scrambles, finds Nadeem Robinson for six. Purple with some life, Middletown brings the heat though. The QB slinging it tonight, Julian De La Cruz to Trent Sotelo. Middletown wins 26-14. All right, over to Moses Brown visiting Narragansett. The Mariners were out to play. They strike first. Matt Timpson to Michael Fiorello, who would break some tackles. We speed this up for you all the way into the end zone for the score, but that would be all the scoring they would do. It was all Quakers after that, starting with the defense. Miles Craddock with the tackle for loss there. 26 MB, the final. Another D3 matchup. West Warwick looking to move to 2-0, hosting Ponagansett. Scoreless game. The home team strikes first. Brady Miale over the middle to Jacob Suffoletto, the slot receiver, in for six. Chieftains answer, though. Robert Grenga rolls right and finds Bryce Patterson. Two feet, yes, those are inbounds by the sophomore <laughs> Wizards. Exactly, Wizards stay unbeaten 13 to 7 over Ponagansett. All right, we're going to take a quick timeout from us and send it to the third member of our team in Sam Knox. All right, thanks, guys. Plenty of action to start, but we are far from done here. Still some games from Rhode Island and some from Massachusetts as well. Well, Lincoln students rocking the Hawaiian theme. I guess you got to do that while it's still a little warm. Taking on North Smithfield, Mount St. Charles. Lions up 13-7. In the third, Tyler Durang takes the toss and sprints to the house for the score. Defender just coming up short there. The Northmen with the ball a little bit later on. Zach Vowles swings it to his receiver. He was going to get the first down. He's hit hard, but it's worth it. Vowles drops back again, is stuffed by Lucas Marshall. The Lions move to 2-0 on the season, 33-7 the final. 
Coventry hosting Tollgate in a D3 matchup. Oakers cheerleaders getting the home crowd fired up. Titans trailing, but on the march. Inside the 10, that scoring drive ends in the worst way. Oakers senior Tommy Turner, he was a hometown hero, picks off the pass and the baseball star not stopping. He jukes a defender downfield. Yeah, he goes the distance. That's stamina. 94 yard pick six. Coventry rolls the 45 7 win over Tollgate. All right, Johnson traveling to Newport to take on Rodgers. The Panthers in the red zone. Neri Vasquez rolls out and finds his man, Dylan Martins, for the touchdown. But here comes the home squad on the ground game. If you've seen a running back and a good one, it's this guy. Davon London wants one thing and one thing only a touchdown. The bus just cruising to the land of six with a vicious stiff arm. No one gets in his way or his team's way. 25-24, a close one. Rodgers wins. Guys, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Sam. Good technique there, moving the ball to the outside hand. Cheerleaders also excited in Pawtucket. Tallman hosting Charahouse. Scoreless late second quarter. Fourth and goal. Chargers go for it. Connor Perrin hands to Colin Fitz. He sheds a tackle and scores. Charaho goes on to win 17-14 on a last second field goal. And Tiverton hosting Situate. No score early in this one. Anthony Dupius to Charlie Grover. This is a big one. 50 yards, making it 7 to nothing. Spartans on the road. The host trailed 14 to 13 into the fourth quarter, defending their home turf. Benjamin Sawa to Rajin Ramuno. That puts Tiverton up for good. 19-14, they would win it. All right, there's all your highlights from Rhode Island. Coming up next on the Friday Night Blitz is Eric Rube in studio to break it all down. The Wendy's Friday Night Blitz continues on WPRI 12. And the Rube man is in the house, Eric Rube from the Providence Journal to break down the night that was in week two here on the Wendy's Friday Night Blitz. Let's start with our game of the week. You were there along with Taylor. N.K. Hendy, always a good one in 18 and 19 in the regular season. Those games decided by single digits. Same thing tonight, but what made this one different? Uh, it, you know, it was it, we were trying to find out a lot about both teams. What did Hendrick have? You know, a lot of people talked about Hendrick in the offseason. Oh, they, they lost a lot. They lost a lot. They proved it last week and proved it again. The Hendrickin is the same Hendrickin of old. They're going to run, they're going to play good defense, and they're going to grind out games. North Kingstown, they showed us they've got some offense and they've got a little bit more talent than I think a lot of people thought. And they had a chance at the end of the game. Fill us in on that. Yeah, it, it, things got interesting. It was, you know, it looked like Hendrickin was about to take control of the game. Uh, North Kingstown gets a big play on a 51-yard pass to Andrew Charnello. He punches it in for a score. Uh, you know, Hendrickin responds the way they do, drives the field. Looks like they're going to score. Jaden Falcone, about a yard away from the end zone, gets stripped by Charnello. NK's ball at the two. Got to go the length of the field with five and a half left. But uh, Hendrickin's defense stepped up. Made plays, sealed out the game. Most of the other games uh, tonight were one-sided. Last night, there were four really good games, sort of the appetizer we're going to have now on Thursday nights in the Ocean State with the ref shortages. We were at the EP St. Ray's game. It looks like the Townies could be back at 2-0. And, you know, I had a chance to talk to Stephen Clark, who was a big, had a big game last night, over 100 yards for East Providence. And I asked him straight up, are the Townies back? And he said, the Townies haven't gone anywhere. They've just been trying to implement the system that Coach Jim Stringfellow put in. The option looks like it's back. The defense played hard, swarming to the ball. I mean, it looked like those early 2000 Townies teams that competed for state titles. The first two Townies games were at Pierce Field. Any intel as to when they'll get on that brand new nice field behind that high school? Uh, they had some issues when the, uh, the rainstorm hit a couple weeks back. Some, there was some issue with the light. They're just making sure it's totally safe and ready to get back. But they, although I don't know, at this point, uh, Coach Stringfell, I don't know if he's going to want to change venues. If they're winning at Pierce, they may stay at Pierce. All right, we got about 15 seconds left. Anything else catch your eye or what you're looking forward to tomorrow? Uh, the Supercharges of Charaho. Big win over Tolman. That really surprised me today. Yeah, they look good. 17-14 on a last second field goal. That's Rube. We will check out what type of sneaks he's wearing uh, in two blocks from now, or he can just tell us right now with that. What are those? Concord 11s, classic. I like it. Nice and white and fresh, beautiful. All right, let's uh, go to break here. And when we come back, one of our favorite segments, Coach Mic'd Up with Keith Croft from Hendrickon. The Wendy's Friday Night Blitz continues on WPRI 12. We're back on the Blitz, and we've got a fan favorite segment right now. We've got the coach mic'd up, and we are going back to our game of the week. We mic'd him up many times before, and he's back again this season. It is Hendrickens head coach Keith Croft. Hey, 
go. Good job. Good field position. Good job. Come on, guys. This is big. Just a thought. I don't know. Because I feel like they're on the ropes. You know, like nothing's working. We don't want to throw the ball, but maybe we just start gassing the team. I don't know. That's all right. That's all right. It's fine. We got too many guys on the field. We don't have a choice. Yeah, baby. Yeah, CD. Yeah, CD. Get in the game. Frank, that's not a first, I don't think. No, it is a first. It is a first. We're in two down territory here, so don't go nuts. Well, maybe not. We'll go for a field goal. All right, good job, because I was going to kick a field goal. See what I mean? He hugged the sidelines. He either had to go straight ahead or all the way to the right. There was nowhere for him to go. That was a perfect kick. Let's not get carried away here. Keith Croft, a staple here on the Blitz. Coming up next, we check on a big game from the Bay State. The Wendy's Friday Night Blitz continues on WPRI 12. And the Attleboro Elks Trophy on the line. Bishop Fian traveling to face Big Blue. Third quarter, Attleboro up 13-7. Fian on the move. Connor McHale to Khrushchev Kapadia. They try the lateral. Everything looked great, but the execution, the rocks jump on it. The Attleboro defense stealing the show. Anthony Salviati jumps the pass. He's off to the races. Blue Bombardiers 27, rocks 7. That will do it for this edition of the Friday Night Blitz. We've got the whole crew here. Rube wanted to stand here just to make sure that you could see his shoes. Yes, that's going to be a staple here on the Blitz. For Sam Knox and Taylor <laughs> Begley, he's Eric Rube. I'm Maury Hirsch Gordon. We send you off with the East Providence Band of the Week.